So recently, FNAF celebrated its 10-year anniversary by having a big one-week birthday bash for the first week of August. Each day, they'd release a new piece of FNAF content for the fans to enjoy. Overall, it was an amazing event that garnered a lot of needed hype for the franchise. It had some huge highs and also its fair share of lows. Now, today, instead of talking about anything actually interesting that got revealed, like the new script leaks or the toy animatronics being showcased or that Dead by Daylight collab, I instead want to make a video on a trashy demo for an official FNAF racing game. Not the demo for the joy of creation, an actual promising looking game. No, I want to talk about a racing game that gets outshined by Roblox graphics. So what exactly is a 5 laps at Freddy's? Well, as I said, it's a racing game. That's about it. On August the 3rd, the trailer was published to Click Team's official channel. Now right off the bat, it immediately got a mixed reaction. Some people thought the game looked promising, but just needed a graphical tune-up, and others thought this was the worst thing they had ever saw. But for most people, they were just confused. The whole trailer kind of felt like a bad April Fool's joke that was going to lead into something more promising. It was like, there's no way they made this and thought it was good enough to release. Like, there has to be something more to this. You had people picking apart the trailer for every drop of lore they could find. Which makes this whole thing a lot more funnier when four days later they just kind of dropped the demo on Steam with an even more suspicious looking announcement tweet. Sadly, this wasn't a bad joke from what we can tell, but instead an actual game in development, and it was just as bad, if not worse, than what the trailers made it seem like. Right off the bat, the biggest issue with this game is its presentation. The game just looks ugly, which feels wrong to say. Obviously, the devs had a much more brighter and cheerier tone for this game in mind, given the Tumblr-esque redesigns of the animatronics and the killer 8-bit soundtrack accompanying the game. But yet they still completely missed the mark and somehow thought this looked good. First off, I'm not a game designer or animator, but I can still tell when something is just bad. All of the UI just looks bland and clunky. Just look at the title screen and tell me this doesn't look like something you'd see on a bad HIO horror game. Secondly, they need to fix the models. Picking your character is supposed to be something that gets you hyped for the game. While who you decide to play may not affect the overall race and game, there's still a sort of magic to a good character select screen that almost every game should try to replicate. Five Laps at Freddy's manages to have none of that. Where Mario Kart had a beautiful and sleek design and pretty satisfying sound effects, this game had poorly rendered lifeless models staring directly into your soul. And the ironic part is that this could be said about the entire game. There are so many odd textures, low poly models, and just jank to the game that it's insane. The devs clearly released this way before it was ready to be seen by the public, which doesn't make sense because it's a demo for a game that was announced three days prior. Like there was no public demand for this, but yet they just sort of pushed it out because I guess they wanted to fill a day on the calendar. The newly designed characters try their best to give off a sense of personality and soul but yet they fail miserably. And that's solely due to the fact that they're just sitting there menacingly. This game likes a surprisingly needed amount of animation for a racing game. The most movement you'll see is when you turn the car left to right. I promise you the most basic standing idle animation would have made this character select screen a whole lot better. Once again, I want to bring up Mario Kart because I feel like while this game will never truly match the same level of care and detail that went into this AAA million dollar project, they can still take things that worked from there and apply them here. A good example of one of these things that should be implemented here is voice acting because as of right now, the game, sound-wise, just like everything else, is empty. And this wouldn't even be that hard to pull off, because it's not like almost every FNAF character has a canonical voice actor who I bet would be more than willing to record just the simplest sound effects for their characters. And while we're at it, they should 100% fix up the character portraits to include some reaction animations to whatever's taking place. It's the little things like that that truly help make a game. And well, yeah, for a demo, you don't need to have all of these things at once, but when you release a demo that no one was asking for for a game that was so recently announced and literally had the release date planned just a year from now and yet you still somehow managed to make it look this bad I think it's fair game to be super critical. Next up I want to pick apart the maps because I sure do have a lot to say. Out of the three maps we received only one was visually pleasing to look at. The rest had terrible shading, poor visibility, and just ugly models. Fazbear Hills while not being the most intricate map the vibrant colors and neon lights managed to make this map actually kind of enjoyable. There was never a moment where the map felt too dark or looked ugly. Midnight Motorist on the other hand is quite literally just the complete 
complete opposite. The entire night shift portion of this track is a nightmare for people with bad vision. The ugly red skybox manages to cause the map's track to blend in, making navigating feel frustrating. Because like, the whole map becomes just not being able to see where you're going. But at least this map is kind of interesting, since it's a callback to the Midnight Motorist minigame and they have some cool obstacles in the way like the cars and the stands with people in them. Something I can't call interesting, but I can say it has all of the other map's previous flaws and more is the sinkhole. This is probably the worst racing track I've ever played, and it's honestly the reason why I'm making this video. But before I discuss the gameplay jink of the stage, I want to talk about how bad the stage is visually, because Jesus Christ, what were they thinking? I get this whole track takes place underground in the ruins of the pizza plex, but does that mean the walls have to look this bad? Why does the statue look like that? And why is the track so rigged and poorly textured? If Midnight Motorist was a pain for people with bad vision, then the sinkhole is the final ball for people with just vision. Everything blends in and yet they still decide to dim the lights and it's like why? If the devs want to somehow fix all of these maps, here's my advice. Add more things to Fazbear Hills, like other animatronics walking around in the background or just more buildings. Try to make it like that one Animal Crossing map from Mario Kart. They need to truly make this map feel like a FNAF World reference. And for Midnight Motorists, maybe add some more signs or flashing lights on the highway or just change the shading a bit to make the track stand out more. And when it comes to the sinkhole, just start over. The gameplay sucks. Like, I was trying to find a way to ease into this, but I can't really. The carts all feel slippery, drifting's awful, and going off-road completely brings all motion to a halt, meaning there's no possibilities for small shortcuts or even the tiniest of mistakes. These are all really bad issues for a racing game. First, let's tackle the racing itself. It doesn't feel good to play. Constantly, I'm slamming to a wall for no reason. The game somehow manages to give stick drift to a keyboard. Okay, I'm in first. I'm in first. I'm in first. First is the worst. Second is the best. Th what the f***? What the f***? I don't know how you do that, but Click Team sure found a way. There's also just not much outside of driving and using items. There aren't tricks you can do, and the jumping mechanic feel awkward. And not to mention, it doesn't even really add anything to the game, resulting in me just forgetting it's there. The drifting in this game kind of awkwardly drags your car down to a stop, and if devs feel like it, completely changes your course of direction for absolutely no reason. Another issue, is at least for the demo, the AI sucks. Which, you know, that's a common thing, but here it truly shines. Constantly, they can either get stuck or just not appear in your game. I'm not asking for hardcore rubber banding, but when I get into, like, first place and I'm just cruising ahead of the competition, I'm kind of just, like, not having fun, because there's not really any threat of them catching up. And, since there's a lack of a map showing me any info on where they are, if I pass the person behind me by too much, I just won't get any info on how far of a lead I have. And same with being stuck in the back. There's just a lack of needed info making this game just feel empty. Next up is the item boxes, or whatever this is. There's a lack of variety and just a lack of them on the map. At least as of right now, since we're playing against NPCs, unless you're directly in the middle placement, there's no use for items because there won't be anyone to use them on. So when the driving sucks, and there's no fun mechanics, the whole game just sort of turns into a mess, which honestly explains everything. First gameplay fix is boost the number of racers from 8 to 12, if not more. Because like, these maps are pretty big for just 8 racers, which is ironic that the maps are so big, yet they still had the genius idea of giving us 5 laps instead of 3, causing each race to drag out longer than it should. Second, if they add more item boxes around the map, that results in more items being used, resulting in games becoming a lot more hectic and fast paced, which is going to be a lot more enjoyable than this snooze fest. The third issue has to do with the maps again. Please, for the love of God, add a mini-map to this game. Not getting any sort of info about the layout of these tracks causes so many problems for the racers. And while they're at it, they need to fix the track layout. They feel so poorly thought out. You have so many walls you just can't avoid because of how drifting controls and the speed at which you're going. Once again, this issue is most prevalent in the night parts of Midnight Motorist and the sinkhole as a whole. Because get it? As a whole? Get it? As a, as a whole sinkhole.
Overall, this game is a huge mess. There's a plethora of bugs and things that just need to be ironed out. And as I've stated, the whole game just sort of feels lifeless and empty. I don't know how big of a budget slash team of people are working on this, but seeing as the full release is slated to come out in 2025, I'm extremely cautious that A, this game is going to be a huge flop, or B, it's going to have a major delay because there's no way they could possibly make what's basically just a concept pitch you turn in to get greenlit, turn into a fully fledged game that anyone would be dumb enough to pay for in such a surprisingly short amount of time. But although I might have came off extremely cynical and disappointed, I think if they do manage to add the stuff I mentioned here and more, this game could genuinely be a pretty big hit. The actual popular racing game scene is either super over the top realistic for the slop or like Mario Kart. So a new competitor by an already big franchise that's available on all platforms would be awesome. But in the end, everything is in the hands of Click Team and whoever else is working on the project. But in the meantime, if you want to play an actual fun racing game that has FNAF characters, go play Sonic Robo Blast 2. That game has everything I discussed and has a plethora of modding support and a pretty big community, meaning you'd basically have an endless supply of content. But um, originally, this was the part of the script where I go, well, I did this whole review and we don't even know if this game is just a hoax or not. But, seeing as Click Team has started to truly patch and iron out this game in ways that definitely seem to be heading in the right direction, I think it's pretty fair to say that this game is coming out. And if that's the case, well, um, best of luck to Click Team, and in about a year from now, we'll see how everything's changed.